Okay, so I have it on the computer. All right. Everybody. Hmm. A good yom to everybody. Today is a yom tov. It's a good day. Every day is a good day. But some days are better than others. Today is a day in, uh, it was 1825. Anybody remember uh, a few years ago? Rabbi was released, wasn't it? The first yes, of the, the The second Rabbi, second little Rabbi, right? Dove Bear was released from prison. And um, on that day, 34 years ago, my son was also released from the womb of his mother. <laughs> 34 years ago today. Um, and guess what we called them? Dove Bear, after the Midler Rebbe. <laughs> Beryl, <laughs> for those who know him. So um, an auspicious time. The um, a story was once of an individual came to a big... Uh, non-Hasidic rabbi and was complaining about, uh, you know, the Chabad, that, you know, they're adding holidays. Who's ever heard of such a thing? You know, we have our biblical holidays. We have our rabbinic holidays. You know, Hanukkah is coming. We have a Purim. And, and they're adding. So he said, you know, by us, unfortunately, we're, uh, people are subtracting and they're observing less and less. Uh, at least they're adding. So that's a good thing. So, um, so we add holidays. We have a, a reason to uh, to connect and to celebrate. And uh, the truth is, just learning from the Torah portion of the week is enough reason to, to celebrate. So we are Parshas Vayishlach. And in this Parsha, things are coming somewhat full circle in a way, you could say, right? At least for Yaakov, he's heading back after uh, fathering 11 of the 12 children in the previous parsha, two wives and two um, uh, handmaids. And almost the 12 tribes of Israel are born. And now he's uh, about to reunite with Esau. They haven't seen each other for over 20 years. And uh, he sends messengers. So we know the story, but let's look inside. Let's share the screen here. Oh boy. Ah, there we go. All right. Vayishlach Yaakov Malachim Lafanov. And Yaakov sent angels ahead of him to his brother Esau, to the land of Seir, the field of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, So shall you say to my master, to Esau, Thus said your servant Yaakov, I have so sojourned with Le uh, Lavan, his father-in-law, and I have tarried until now. And I have acquired... Oh realized one second i've acquired oxen do uh, donkeys flocks maidservants manservants maidservants and i've sent them uh to my master in favor of, in his favor to find favor in his eyes rather sorry okay so um rashi tells us that what he actually did was uh Give me a moment here. What did he do? He prepared for this meeting with Asav once he got that message that Asav is coming back with 400 men and doesn't look uh, too, uh, too, too positive. 
And one second. He prepares with three things. One, he sends gifts of livestock and servants to Aesop, hoping that that kind gesture will get his better side. Second thing, he prays to God for deliverance. And the third thing, he actually prepares for war, for a battle with Aesop. Let us... Hold on. Difficulty here. Sorry, one sec. Okay. So let's see this inside. It's there in front of you. So Yaakov prepared himself with three things for a gift, for war, and for prayer. For a gift, as the verse states, so that the gift passed on before him. For prayer, as the verse states, God, my father, Abraham. And for war, as the verse states, and, they rem and the remaining camp will escape. Will escape. So, you know, this is the famous classical statement, hope for the best and prepare for the worst, right? Um, Yaakov, we know, wants to avoid conflict. How do we know that? That's why he left home. That's why his mother Rivka said to leave home, so you can avoid conflict. Because Esau is an aggressive brute. And he's a very, um, he's a yeshiva student, sit, sits and learns. So the obvious question, what changed? What is it now that he is preparing, you know, to be aggressive if necessary? Um, why now? What happened previously that he didn't, you know, engage in in a fight he left home but now right mm -hmm. yes lily but he has a family now to protect he has wife and kids okay very good excellent right can't argue that right he's got to protect his family um so in other words before he you know on a on a technicality before he didn't have a family, so therefore avoid the uh, the battle and just move on, right? Now he must protect his family. So um, on a surface level, that's a very true uh, statement, no doubt. He has faith now. He has, he has faith. faith like when David was being chased and he drew up uh, Jacob's name. Okay. I, I think now he's got faith. He accepts that what happens, God will be there to protect him. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, absolutely true. Okay. So uh, we're going to go into Rashi a little more in, in depth. <clears throat> Rashi, in the, in the Hebrew, he says, Hiskin atzmoi lishloi shedvarim. So the word hit, hiskin or hitkin. <coughs> is translated that he prepared himself for three things. However, for those who are familiar with Hebrew, the word uh, hitkin comes from the word tikkun. What does tikkun mean? Repair. Repair, right. Thank you, Aoba. He repaired himself with three things. Oh, what does that mean exactly? What does it mean he repaired himself with three things? Isn't he preparing himself, <laughs> right? Now, uh, anybody here from uh, the good old down south in a, in a, you know, 
So maybe they would say it in, you know, I'm fixing to go to the store. <laughs> right? I say that all the time. You say that, oh, we got a Southerner. We've got a Southerner right here. Okay, thank you. Can we hear it with that Southern accent? <laughs> I fix it to go to the store. Oh, love it. <laughs> thank you. Now, that would be wonderful, you know, if Torah was uh, speaking with a Southern accent. Of course, it doesn't. It doesn't speak with any accent. I mean, except the accent that we give to it, so you can give any accent that you want. But obviously, it doesn't mean that I'm preparing to go to the store. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say that. And that's not the precise meaning of those words, although we can play with those words to, in, to intend that meaning. So why isn't Rashi just say that which means literally he prepared himself. That would be the appropriate term. Not hitkin from the word tikkun, that he um, that he fixed himself. So we need to know what that means. Obviously, he's fixing himself and to prepare himself. Okay, fine. Thank you, Tim, for joining and everybody else who just came on. Um, for some reason, it's not working to go on to uh, Facebook. I don't know why, but Arzoi de Maisa. So it is. Okay, another question that the Rebbe asks is that Rashi is saying that he prepared himself or fixed himself with three things. And then he goes and enumerates them. Now, it's not 33 things. It's three things, 33 things. You know, if you go to enumerate, so maybe you want to say the number first because maybe afterwards you're gonna, you might lose count, right? But three things, you're not gonna lose count. The fact that Rashi is saying that he fixes himself or prepares himself with three things is emphasizing something that is, what it, you know, in the three, what is he emphasizing? Because there's no need to tell us that when it's a simple count. To say it means that there's something important to know that it's three. What's important to know that it's three things that he's preparing himself. Those questions clear? So, you know, uh, there's a, a teachings from from the previous Rebbe that says that just as we need to know our faults and our challenges, we also need to know what our good qualities are. And we need to be aware. We need to be aware. You know, sometimes uh, Jewish people in particular, you know, they get down on themselves and, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not as so good in this and I'm not, you know, I, I need to improve here. But, you know, we need to be equally aware of our positive qualities. We need to know them. We need to know our character. We need to know what, you know, what makes us tick, what, what you know, what, um, uh, inspires us, what, what, you know, what do we have a gishmak and an enjoyment in, and so on. We need to understand our spiritual composition. And, and as we will understand today, well, understanding that spiritual composition will help us to be all that we can. Right. So in the, the spiritual composition of the individual, so we've learned this idea before. Uh, we're familiar with it. The, uh, and, and by the way, I speak about spiritual composition. Uh, of course, there's a negative side of us, but you know, that's not what defines us. We, we need to know the positive things in us that define us. So we know that in the world, there's a, a duality, right? So when it comes to character, you can have an introvert and extrovert. You can have a, you know, a person who is a creature of habits and another person who is, you know, uh, adventurous. You have a quiet person, a loud person. You, you know, you will have uh, a person who 
sees the greater picture and the person who sees the details. You have the person who is, uh, is, is you know, strength of character, another person who's, you know, uh, all embracing and so on. And where do we see this idea in Torah really expressed um, is with Hillel and Shammai. And this is a concept that we've learned uh, many times and I'm sure many of you are very familiar with. And so um, our sages tell us that Hillel was much more of a lenient in his halachic rulings and Shammai was much more stringent in his halachic rulings. And the reason is as the Zohar explains, is because the root of their soul, the root of their soul. Hillel comes from rooted in chesed, in divine kindness, and therefore kindness is about embracing. Um, it's about embracing, embracing thick people, embracing life, right? And therefore, therefore, the outlook is to embrace naturally by that character demeanor, and therefore, you be lenient, because lenient means in a halachic ruling that this is kosher, this is valid, this is, uh, it, this is pure, right? Because of the natural inclination of the soul will perceive and see everything differently. I, I don't remember, um, you know, uh, there was a scientist um, and I can't remember which scientist it was, who it was about 150 years ago, that was considering to go into history. He wanted to start study the study of history. Maybe he had enough of science, or maybe he just wanted to do both. I don't know. And uh, one evening, he was uh, living on top of a uh, of an inn, and there was a brawl that ensued in the inn. He went down and he spoke to eight different people to find out what happened. What what, what went on over here? And he got eight different perspectives, different answers. And, you know, they didn't match one with the other. So he said, oh, I'm giving up history. If current events, there can't be a, um, a, a, a one opinion. Uh, then on history, for sure, there will not be an objective one opinion, right? The truth is, well, it's not meant to be that way. Why is it not meant to be that way? Is because we all have a soul that comes from a different place in the divine order of things, and therefore are that taint that I, I wouldn't say taints our perspective, but that um, in, in a negative way, but that gives us perspective. And today, with um, uh, oh shoot, what's it called? Uh, that test. Um, if, if, if light is a particle or light is a, a, a um, line, um, oh, what's it called, that, te that, and I forgot it, come back to me at some point. In any case, um, depending on our perspective, that's how we're gonna view things. And that's the way it's meant to be. And that's why we have difference of opinions. And that's okay. Now, unfortunately, we live in a world today that that's, you know, can't accept the other opinion. We'll get into that maybe later, right? But that's made up because of the soul of the individual, right? Where do we see this original originate from? Avram, he's the embodiment of chesed. You know, we've been learning the last few weeks uh, when we're speaking about Avram. We, then we spoke about Yitzchak. He's the embodiment of Gvura. That's why Yitz, Avram was out there, you know, bringing the word of God to the masses and uh, em embracing everyone. Yitzchak was much more gvura. He was much more focused. He dug wells. He dug deeper. Um, Avram didn't dig as deep into people. And that's why his wells got covered over. Yitzchak, on the other hand, dug much deeper. So when he dug, he was able to get the depth of the reservoir of water from below. And therefore, those wells were not covered over because that's the nature of gvura. Of, uh, of a power to look deep down from within and, and so on, right? And Yaakov is a combination of the two. And that's what we've learned previously. He's a combination of the two. And therefore he is unique of the, the other two, right? 
he's unique in that um, Avram had a son, Ishmael, that went off the path. Yitzhak had a son, Esau, that went off the path. But Yaakov has a complete home, all of the children following the path, right? Um, and we're going to explain more ultimately why that is so. So, but let's get back to Hillel and Shammai for a moment. Interesting thing is that we said that, you know, if, if, if your soul is of a certain makeup, and we're talking about holy people over here. So they're attuned to their soul. And, and when we say soul here, we're not talking about your animal soul, right? To be attuned to your animal soul's needs, right? That, uh, you know, I lust this and I'm uh, very, uh, you know, willful and wanting that um, is all we're talking about, right? That, that's, not a, that's not a healthy thing. That's a, a corruption. But we're talking about attuned to, to your, your, your higher self, to your godly soul. That's what we're talking about, right? So if you're focused, if your soul is of this nature, right, then it would seem that if you are chesed, then you're going to see everything in that kind of lens, right? Which makes sense. So everything that Hill will be, will be about being embracing because that's chesed, and therefore we'll have, see a leniency because of that in law. In other words, it, it, will, it will focus in on the, uh, I don't know how to explain this, it, it will see the element in the discussion on that where it's to embrace rather than not embrace, right? Because that's what chesed is. But we find an unusual thing. The Mishnah, itself tells us that there are cases that held, that Beit Shammai was lenient and Hillel was stringent. An example of that is that if uh, an egg is laid on Yom Tov, so Beit Shammai says that it can be eaten. It's not called Noilad. Noilad means something new. You can only have on Yom Tov something that was prepared before Yom Tov to have it for Yom Tov. But an egg that was laid before Yom Tov, right? So Beis Hillel says it can't be eaten because it's something new that it, it, it was, it's a new creation. So it wasn't there prepared for the holiday. So therefore, you can't use it for the holiday. That's what Hillel says, which, right? Beis Shammai says, oh, you could. He's more lenient. His reasoning is because, well, the egg wasn't prepared, but the chicken was. <laughs> right the chicken was in other words it was prepared it was there ready that it could be used for the holiday right so therefore you could use the egg anyway um and in many and in several instances we see that hillel is stringent and shammai is lenient so why would that be you, you know it's a funny thing when it comes to politics, it doesn't seem like anybody can cross the aisle, right? Now, some of it might be just because of politics, but I suggest that there are some people, maybe it's not just because of politics, because this is the, really the way they see things. This is how they perceive things. Some it's just political, fine. But some, it might be that this is the way they see things. So how is it possible over here that they cross the aisle? Anybody? Mm -hmm. you know Others are seeing things the opposite way that their the nature of their soul is. Yes. Sorry. Anybody? Not all at once. Well, each nature has a piece of the other nature. You know, like inside of Hesed, there's Gevura. You know, inside of Gevura, there's a bit of Hesed. So, you know, and compassion and you know, all the way down the middle. So it's not like, even though it's, it's our root is there in whatever um, sephir that it's in, it, it doesn't just, it, that's not all that's there. Like there's, there's aspects of everything within that. Fine, but if, you're, if your nature is, if your root soul is coming from a certain place, 
then why wouldn't you always be, be seeing things? If you're being true to your soul, forget about me, <laughs> forget about you, <laughs> right? Yeah, right? We're, we're, not, we're not a direct reflection of our soul. So therefore, we'll waffle between this and that because that one might be because of our animal soul that wants this for this desire and then wants something else for another, you know what I mean? So, but if someone is really a, a servant of God, and is truly, you know, attuned to their soul, and this is where the root of their soul comes from. How, how do you get? How do you get there? How do you cross the aisle? So, Eliana, you, you, not that you said wrong, but I'm challenging you so you could get it clearer. Yeah, I'm thinking. No, I'm thinking. <laughs> now, now I've challenged. Um, well, I'm going. I'm thinking back to a couple parshas ago. We were talking about um, Abraham and how um, you know. Uh, I'm sorry, I've lost it. COVID brain, so kind of still kicks out words out of my brain. But um, his wife, second time around, how he had six sons and he let them go. You know, he he sent them out. So him, Avram is still a form. You know, he's still Hesed, but he still had Gavura to say, you know, to say you got to go. Granted, not arguing. I'm asking the understanding of that. Right, that's what we just said. Yeah, with that, what did we just say about yeah. Hillel? Hillel sometimes yeah. is stringent. Shammai is sometimes lenient. My question is, isn't, how do how do you cross the aisle? How do you get there? In other words, what's the understanding of that? Is it was it was uh, you know like that introspection, that humility, that like it's not just acting out of your default. It's like a conscious questioning exploring you know giving it tasting it trying you know what i mean like you're both correct i'm still going to challenge <laughs> <laughs> you're both correct but still you know what okay. so let me give you a, a metaphor let me give you a metaphor stem cells right what can you do with a stem cell you can take it from one part of the body, and for some reason, that stem cell can now be used as a muscle cell or a brain cell. How come? Because incorporated in it is everything else. This is the uniqueness of on the side of holiness is that things are mutually inclusive and not exclusive. So therefore, um, chesed, when you are truly attuned to your neshama, will incorporate gvura. Why? Because they're both for a higher purpose. They're both for a higher purpose, right? So they're not mutually, they're, in other words, the, the expression of kindness and the expression of gvura, the action seem to be very different one from the other and mutually exclusive. One is very warm and embracing and the other one is very harsh, can be harsh, let's say, right? It's gvura, it's harsh, you know? The expression of it can seemingly, right? be mutually exclusive. But when you, when you dig a little deeper and the metaphor for this perhaps would be like, you know, when you, when you wanna teach your child to walk, you move away from the child and the child feels abandonment. But really what motivates you is love, but it doesn't appear that way. It's really a kindness that you're doing that's, that has an appearance of gvura of a harshness, but it's not being harsh. It's being loving because they're mutually inclusive with, of each other, right? That, so that's what a, we, go ahead. Was it what we, were, what we weren't getting in our original answers was that there was an, we were implying that one person might think that the other 
aspect is negative. And so there's like this work or something to try and, you know, to, to be able to express a, a different, you know, if you're chesed, the gavura, but what you're saying is that it's not that difficult. They see it, 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 it's all holy. So even if they happen to default to one, there's absolutely no reason why they can't use the other one and express the other one because they never considered the other side unholy or... Exactly. Very well said. Very well said. Uh, as a matter of fact, so you can put it like there's a front burner and a back burner, right? So your nature is going to be the front burner, but in, when you are attuned to your nishama, right, and know it, then you know that that's the front burner, but you know at the same time you have in the back burner this capacity to engage with, um, with that other quality that is not your naturally God-given trait. But it's got to be there. As Reish Lakish says in, in the Medrash, anyone who acts mercifully without uh, and when they ought to act cruelly will eventually act cruelly when they ought to act merciful, mercifully. In other words, we have to have both qualities, which one's on the front burner, which one's on the back burner, um, and which one is the right time, obviously, you know, using it at the right time, everything um, is what is necessary. So if we are blind and just fo following the one quality that we are, then we're not really attuned to our nishama the way it is rooted in its source. We're just following a nature that is not from, a, from, from the, our higher element, but it's from a lower place because just following you what's, you know, what's instinctual for you, what's natural for, for you. And therefore that when you do that, that's when, you know, eventually you're gonna act cruel to people who need to be uh, to have mercy. Now, who's the prototype of all this that we just were speaking about? Jacob. No. Well, I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. But he's not the prototype that we think about at least and, and not what we have till now, but you're not wrong, Ahuba, sorry. Not wrong, I, um, but that's not who we think of. Clearly in the Torah, in what we've just expressed at least. We're, we're going we're gonna to bring this to another level soon, but on what we've just discussed. Moses? No. Adam? Come on. Where is it? Hashem. Hashem. <laughs> You've got He Adam. sits on the throne of glory. I mean, he sits on the throne of mercy uh -huh. and he sits on the throne of judgment. Oh, uh, well, you know, listen, well, 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 you know, let's throw in the hat. You talk about God and, you know, that's it. Well, what's more to talk about? No, we, we need a person. <laughs> Abraham, maybe? Abraham. Abraham? Diana? Adam? Uh, that, uh, why do you say Abraham? Diane? Oh, I oh, wish I, I said Adam. No, not Adam. Mm -hmm. uh, Abraham. Abraham. Asaph. Sorry? Asaph. Asaph. Jacob. Yes, he Jacob stole his blessing and ran away. Okay. I'm not sure how you got that, but so uh, Diane said Abraham. So it is it's Abraham. He is the embodiment of Chesed. And what did he do? He took his son, his only son that he loves, and he brought him as an offering. He did the exact opposite of what his nature was and to bring his son as an offering. That was completely out of the box, out of his nature. This is more than just, you know, um, Shammai, who is naturally, you know, or, or let's say uh, Hillel, that's naturally chesed like Avram, and they were stringent in Allah. This is much more than a stringency in Allah. This is taking his son and bringing him as an offering. And he does it with complete will, willfully, right? So he's the embodiment of this. Does that make sense? We're all on the same page. We agree. Who's disagreeing with me? Please speak up and, and, and please do. No, we should have remembered because we studied this just a couple of weeks ago or something. Exactly. About how amazing we could Okay. No that. guilt here. No guilt here. No guilt. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but correct, we studied this. So Abraham is the embodiment of this. So much so that what is Hashem? Now I know that you're truly God-fearing. What do you mean? He had nine tests before this, and he he passed with flying colors all of those tests, and now God knows that he's, he's God-fearing? Yes, because all the other tests were within his nature, was within his box, within his natural way to serve. Maybe he was just doing it because, you know, it fits in with his look on life. It fits in exactly with his ideals and his personal goals. But this definitely did not fit in with his personal goals to bring his son. Now I know that you truly are God-fearing. Make sense? Okay. Let's go back to our to our Yaakov Avinu. And as Ova said, she said it was him. I am. You're right. <laughs> but now, um, what we're learning here, it's actually taking it to a new level. What do we learn now? What do we learn till now? Hillel is of a certain nature. Shama is a certain nature. However, from burner back burner, right? Make sense? We get that, right? That quality is there. It's not the you know, you're the natural go-to thing, but sometimes you got to use that quality in your life to serve Hashem, just like Avram did, just like Hillel and Shammai did. So, uh, you know, if you're truly attuned to your neshama, your neshama in, is inclusive, not exclusive. So therefore, it includes the other qualities of the soul that need to be expressed. If I only express the one natural, then it's not coming from the pureness of my neshama. It's coming from my instinctual nature, which is an animal quality, which is the animal soul and not the godly soul, right? But now comes Yaakov. And he's reuniting, right? And what did we learn? Rashi says, Hiskin Satsmai. He repaired himself. Now think about it for a moment. What, what does it mean he repaired himself? I mean, Yaakov needs repair. He's Yaakov, he's a tzaddik, he's a righteous person. What's he repairing over here? Does he not have the quality of, um, does he not have the quality of Avram to do the opposite of his nature? Is he not capable of perceiving things as Hillel and Shammai that they could perceive the opposite from what their natural outlook would be? Of course, of course he can. But here Rashi is coming to say something another shlav, another level in this. Remember, we asked the question, why does it say three things? Is it because what he need to prepare and fix himself was to be able to have all three there at the same time. Not from burner back burner. Not a, I'll do this, and if this doesn't work, I'll try another way. And if that doesn't work, I'll try a third way. No, that's why Rashi says he is fixing himself with three. Three at the same time he needs to do. Now let's think about that. So first of all, an important point is, of course, dealing with any challenge in life, the first thing is, not to see what's out there and what the problem is out there. Could have just thrown up his hands and said, oh, Ace of, there he goes again. He's such a problem. You know, like, oh, there goes my kid again. Such a problem. That's what we naturally would do. And of course, that's not what it's saying here. Um, no, the first thing he does, he's skin is hot smoy. He's repairing himself. He's fixing himself. He's looking inward. What do I need to do in this situation? Now, in, in 
in most situations, you know, so you prepare in in one manner to deal with the situation. And if that doesn't work, then you maybe try a different manner, right? No, nope, he's preparing with all three approaches, which is in a sense, not really reasonable because these um, are very different one from the other. Right? How so? Well, giving lavish gifts, you got to give it with a real, you know, uh, lovingly, right? Got to give it lovingly. Well, think about it. Asaph is coming after, and you got to give gifts. Asaph, who is, you know, who, uh, you know, is full of seemingly hatred, and you're going to display love? Oh. But that wouldn't be hard for him because he was a giving person. Uh, no, we got to work on that. I mean, that's something to be worked on, right? That's, you know, that's something that needs, in other words, instead of, oh, there comes my, you know, my brother is full of hatred and, and kind of deflected and, you know, feel yourself as a victim for, he's not doing that. He's looking inside how he can truly be kind and giving. I mean, think about it, you know, you know, I and mean, we've all had a circumstance where we, where we had someone who was just, you know, really not good to us. And, and yet we were, we, we had to work on ourselves to really be kind and loving. By the way, that happens actually in marriage, probably more than any other place, right? Probably more than any other place is in marriage. Is that, you know, a spouse says something or acts in a certain way. And for you to come back loving, you got to overcome something there. Where? Not overcoming your spouse, you're overcoming yourself to be able to do that. That's work. Well, that's something Yaakov is, you know, um, is fixing it himself, right? Can we see that he didn't give to Laban um, as an example of where he, he wasn't complete in that Hesed yet because he didn't give um, Laban, any, Laban any gifts. You know, when he, when he left, he left in the middle of the night, you know, afraid, um, took everything he owned and you know it's like here's the you know we have this incident he has two enemies more or less you know he has the father-in-law and he has asov and there's a difference in how he responds over here with asov than he did with with his father-in-law um and so can we see where he's starting like is that story like his starting point like a like a picture of his starting point so we can see his progression um in these three repairs with asov very very good point very good very, very good question. So I would look at it a bit differently and say that Lavan um, was not someone to um, transform, to deal with. He's someone, you know, just like, you know, are you, um, and you have, you know, uh, you're, you're, you're very hungry and uh, your friend has a pork sandwich. Um, you don't um, kind of try, try to deal with that. No, right. you're really hungry and the guy has a pork sandwich and he's offering you half of his sandwich. So you, you're really kind. Thank you very much, but no thanks, right? right. Push it away with two hands. So Lovin was of that, you know, the dealings with him, at least at the end, right? Was uh, he did everything he needed to accomplish. He transformed everything he needed to transform. One person he couldn't transform is Lovin. But his environment and he raised up a family that was devoted, you know, devoted Jews that he did accomplish. So uh, he did everything he had accomplished. There was no uh, sparks left for him there, right? Right. But now, Asav is a different story. That's a different story, right? Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, he's got to have this loving quality, but the other hand, 
He's doing something the complete opposite. And what's that? My courage, resilience, getting ready for war. So much so that maybe he's going to get hurt or someone's going to get hurt in his family, God forbid, or he's going to have to hurt someone, right? And then, of course, prayer, which is completely, you know, abnegating yourself and being before God and um, what God needs of you. All of these expressions are one very different than the other. And it's not, his preparation was not, and that's the, the emphasis that Rebbe gives over here, was not like, we'll do this and then we'll try that and we'll try that. No, no, no. It was all three at the same time. In other words, in his mind and in his heart, he developed within himself the capacity to have in the front burner all three things. Chesed, Gvura, Tiferis. All of it. That's a true transformation. Let's see if we can find the words of the Rebbe here. This is why Rashi says Yaakov fixed himself for three things, the ability to make all three preparations at once. Doesn't come naturally. There must be a fixing of oneself first, an internal transformation. This is because each of the three preparations is so different and they are opposite one another. A gift is about a feeling closest and being kind. The battle is about distance and strength. And both of these are human interactions. Prayer, however, is about begging for mercy from above. Therefore, to be able to engage in all three different conflicting approaches at the same time is not nat a natural ability, not even a natural ability of the divine soul. Not even the natural ability of the divine soul's attribute has its own properties. Rather, there must be a fixing of oneself and an internal tr in the transformation. Wow. That's amazing. That's not Beishamai Beishil. That's not Avram Avinu. This is Yaakov. This is way above and beyond. So the question is why? Why was this necessary? Like, like wasn't the regular way, <laughs> you know? So the first thing is that, you know, if we have the capacity in, in us to be all, then we got to be all what we can be. Yaakov is taking things to the next level. He has that capacity. So as God is giving him the opportunity, he's giving him the, the challenge or better yet, the opportunity to become, be, to become all that he can become, right? But, and, and of course, that's on, on one level of things, um, is that, of course, he rising up to defy, again, as the Rebbe says, it's even defying the nature of the godly soul, because godly soul by nature is from burner back burner, right? Hillel is chesed and sees most things in, in the, the view of chesed, but there's the back burner gvura that's a part of it because he's mutually inclusive, because he's an, a reflection of his divine soul. So there'll be that aspect. But here, they're all the front burner. They're all being occupied in his mind and his heart at the same time. Now, he'll... he'll Actually, you can only do one, th one thing at a time, right? Either you're praying or you're giving a gift or you're whatever. That's not, that's not the point. As a matter of fact, we're not going to go into the details, but in, in, in the Rebbe Sicha, the Rebbe Shob asks many questions about the verses that Rashi brings down that seemingly there's better verses to show about prayer, better uh, verses to show about the gift, because it's not about the actualizing of it. 
That's not the point over here. That's not how you fix yourself in, in actualizing. You fix yourself in how are you looking at this? How are you feeling about this? So, it, so he's bringing verses about how he is transforming himself in the view of this, of this situation. But that's for, you know, <laughs> another time. <laughs> So since Asab is such a big klipa, it needs such a powerhouse that comes out of Yaakov to transform whatever he can in the moment of him. The Avram the Malach, who was the son of the Mizitra Magid, who was the uh, you know the the study partner of the Alter Rebbe when the Alter Rebbe came to the Mizitcher Magid? I think he was 15, 16 years old, and they were study partners together. The Alter Rebbe was it you know he was a thief you know that he was a thief. He used to steal time, stole time. <laughs> you know how to steal time? <laughs> but fall back, <laughs> take the clock and and move it back an hour. <laughs> You steal, a, you steal an hour that way. Salter so used to do that with him and when they used to study, because it was new to him, the study of Hasidus, because he just came to the Mizrach Jermagid, a 15, 16-year-old young man. So he wanted to learn more. He was so enthralled. So, so the, the Malach uh, lived during, as the Alter Rebbe, during the times of the Seven-Year War, which was a conflict that raged between... Um, primarily between Prussia and Austria. The Prussians were allied with the British and the Austrians with the French. It was a seven-year war. And the Prussians were led by uh, Frederick II, who was a brilliant um, commander of the army. And usually battles were, were fought back then as you know, uh, one, one regiment versus another regiment. You know, and so you had one regiment on the south fighting, and you had another regiment maybe in the in the east or you know whatever it was, and you know they, that's how we fight battles. But but he took a, he took three regiments at a time to fight one. Now that made you vulnerable maybe on another front, but he figured that way for sure you're going to have victory. So the, so the 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 Malach says, you know, what what a lesson in life that we can learn from there, right? It's, uh, to to fight the war, sometimes you what you need to do. It's not enough one regiment. It's not enough with one battalion. You need to go with everything you got, right? To to win the battle. So of course this is in divine service, <laughs> right? If it's that way in the physical, all the more so it's in the spiritual. When we're facing a challenge from within or from without. Sometimes the conventional one-on-one -on -one tactic is not sufficient. Sometimes we need to bring out all of the troops and to, uh, and to wage the battle, and to wage the battle. So this is the idea over here, um, that what Yaakov is, is accomplishing, because and, and thank you, Eliana, for bringing up before about love on because, you know, as we know, uh, there's holiness, which is what we're engaged in now, the study of Torah, right? There's, uh, there's klipas noiga, which is the shell that covers over, uh, you know, and has good and bad in it, right? Like everything, most things in this world, like this cup, you know, could be used for good, it could be used for bad, right? Make a brach on it, and you use it in order to give you, you know, extra uh, strength and capability to 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 give a class to to serve Hashem. So then you've elevated it, right? Um, and then there's shalish klipas. It's made as something that's completely evil. So lovin is, I mean, even Russia, Esav in a sense is also that, but we're not going to get into that right now. <laughs> um, uh, we won't get into that because he's also a wicked person. But um, Lavan, at least at the end, right? Before that, you know, he lived with him for 20 years and, and dealt with him. 
Um, but now it was a time that this complete klipa, you need to run away from. And that's what we do. Ram Shalosh Klipa is amazing. You have to run away. That's why the Jews ran away from Egypt. Ki baruch ha'am. You have to run away because you have to run away from evil. Right? A negative thought comes into your mind. Push it away. Run away from it. Don't let it take you over. So that was love. Them. But now this is more of a klipa that is a question. And we will not uh, give the answer today uh, fully. But at least what is important is he's engaging in the battle, he's engaging in the gift, and he's engaging in the prayer, because not merely to um, protect his family, which on the surface, that's what it is, but on a deeper level is the effect that he can have on his brother. So the only effect he can have on his brother is at first, where's he at? So he had to come to a level of them being able to have on the front burner three different qualities that are, you know, completely different one from the other, which takes you in all different directions. And yet to be at peace with it, at whole with it, to incorporate that. Again, this is all in a spiritual, uh, this is all in a mental, psychological, emotional level. When it came to action, you're doing one thing at a time, right? In the actions that you do. But before you have actions, you, you know, where's your state of mind? Where's your heart? Where, where are you? So this is what he accomplished as a result. Now, this is a very lofty level. <laughs> And it was in order to achieve something that would be so lofty and ultimately hope, hoping to have an effect on Esau. And, uh, and this is another sicha, but just the brief notion over here is to be able to transform him in such a way that Esau, who's Esau? Edom, right? Edom. To transform him. He's an embodiment of the nations of the world. Edom, by the way, becomes who? Ultimately, Rome. And that's the Western civilization that he embodies. To transform that in order to bring final redemption. More on that in another time. That's Yaakov, why he is the Bechir Shabbos, the, the greatest of the, um, the three uh, forefathers, because he was able to bring things to a different level in his divine service. So where does that leave me, you and I? <laughs> so the fact that we're taught this means that on our level, we can also entertain this on some manner, in some way. Now, and we learned this earlier in Tanya, by the way. We learned this a couple times, uh, two or three times in, in throughout the year in Tanya. And um, it's um, Reb Shimon Bar Yochai taught his son, Reb Lazar about um, the, 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 the awesomeness of the Holy Temple and about its destruction. And, and, and the awesomeness of the destruction. So he says that on one part of my heart, I had such pain because now when you understand, you know, the awesomeness of the Holy Temple and it's destroyed, so, you know, it's, it's much more painful. It's like, you know, when you realize how, how wonderful this person was, even to you, and you didn't even know it, and now you, and, you know, and that, Whatever, you, sometimes you can feel the pain that, oh, what, you know, I didn't know and I wasn't, you know, thankful or whatever. So, and at the same time, he was exhilarated. Why? Because how did he come to the pain? Because he understood how great, what, what the, 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 the beauty of the base of English and, and the holiness and the, and the richness of it. And, uh, and because of the deep understanding, that's exhilarating. Anytime you have a deep understanding of something, it's exhilarating, right? It, 
I hope today you're exhilarated. You're, you know, you're on cloud nine right now. Some of you are actually, Tim, looks like you, you're almost competing with my clouds behind me. <laughs> oh, hi. So, so on the one hand, on one side of the heart, he's exhilarated because of the teachings are like, wow, awesome. And the other side of the heart, because of those teachings, he's broken. Because now he understands. You know, he lived right after the destruction. You know, he lived, uh, I don't know, 50, uh, 50 odd years after the destruction of the Holy Temple, where he could see, still be on the site, the Holy Temple, and see the destruction. You know, which, is, of course, which is, of course, extremely painful. Now, if you're if you're ignorant and not aware, so then you know, not exhilarated by the teachings and not pained by the <laughs> by the loss. So you have no feelings, you know. So my point being is that and and and, and it was both feelings at the same time. So that's something we learned in Tanya, that concept. And this is the idea over here that we're also talking about. Now, and and those two are very different, and likewise here. It's not just two, but it's three different mindsets, three different feelings that you would have, and so on. So the point being is that, yes, we're capable of um, truly loving somebody and at the same time being pained by something by them. Not one after the other the same time but that does you know what comes natural is that you're going to have just one or the other and usually if it's you know usually it's not going to be a reflection of your divine self it's going to be more of the animal soul you in that sense when you can entertain more than one at the same time then you know you're on to something good So we, I, I made a statement at the beginning that uh, from, the, from the previous Rebbe, that just as you need to know your faults, you also need to know your good qualities, right? So you need to know your good qualities because you need to develop them even more so. And you need to focus on them. Why do you need to know your faults? Because that's where your challenges are. And that's where we need to make, uh, where we have to improve and grow. But the truth is it's growth in both places because even with your good qualities means that they're just your natural good qualities, but how are you going to rise above and to be able to incorporate more than what is just our natural inclination. For that, we thank Yaakov. Any questions, any comments? Chaim. Powerful stuff. How do we know what our soul root is? Um, I don't think, you know, I don't think it should be so difficult to know what your temperament, what's your natural temperament. Not, not what is, There's two things, remember. There's what my struggle is. So that's where, let's say, you know, I'm impatient or I get angry or I'm lazy, uh, you know, I'm lustful, uh, you know, so those are the negative parts, right? So those things we need to know, absolutely, right? So we need to know why, because those are challenges that I have to, to work with, right? But the sole root is on the positive things that we have. So we need to be aware of you know the how do I in a positive way see things? Am I seeing it more of, of a chesed quality, of a gvura quality? Both are right, right? We had Avram chesed, we had Yitzchak gvura. One, you know, they were both correct. They weren't, you know, you should be this. You know, no, we should. So that will, you know, 
we, 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 you know, I think uh, we probably have an inclination and, you know, from the way, again, in the positive things and how we, um, you know, deal with things. Um, you know, so to be aware of that, but also at the same time, you know, um, yeah. Thanks. I'm just making the distinction so it makes it a little more clear in what we need to look at because there's the good side of me and the negative side of me, right? So negative side of those struggles, those things are obviously we're more aware of, you know, because, uh, you know, that's like the, the missing tile syndrome that we all have and we have that for ourselves, right? That which is lacking in my life, that's what I uh, focus on, the missing tile syndrome which is, you know, natural. We just got to be careful with that, that we don't, you know, let that take us over. At the same time, as the, as the previous Rebbe said, we need to be aware of our good qualities. So, you know, we all, we have that and we need to be aware of it so we can make it, hone it and, and just make it so much more like he's skin is that's one. Yaakov was aware. He had those qualities. He had, they had to fix it to bring it to the next level. We had to bring them all together. So um, that's a little more difficult because, you know, that we, we, we don't, you know, we don't, um, but I, I don't think it should be that difficult of a job. And that's in Tanya therapy. We can deal with that. That's a Tanya therapy thing. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? I was just going to say, and, and I don't take this. Uh, anyway, if I can, if I can vote Republican, Democrat and Green, then I will. Uh, that might be the test <laughs> that I've reached <laughs> a Jacob level ability to go either way. So I don't think you should vote three. You should have vote for one. And the vote for, for the one is what's good for the Jews. That's when it comes to voting, right? That's not, if, so the vote is the action. What, what we, we need to come to from here, and thank you, Ova, for bringing this up, is the, the, the uh, capability of, um, you know, of um, being open not necessarily to other to the ideas, because I think for the most part, people's ideas are not coming from a godly place. They're coming from their animal soul and not from their godly soul <laughs> or from their goodness. It's coming, all right? And that's why they're all, they can't cross the aisle, right? Because it's about self-preservation. It's not about service at one point. Maybe they came in there for service, but then, you know, the system corrupts them. And I'm not even blaming them. It's just the reality of the way it is, right? So it becomes self-preservation rather than service. And therefore, they don't cross the aisle, right? Um, and, and some of them may be even meaning, you know, think that they're really, you know, really mean it. And on some level, they do. But the system is corrupt, that therefore you cannot cross the aisle, but it will give you the natural inclination not to be able to do that. Your inclination will not, your, your, your perspective will not allow you to do that. And you really think that it's, you know, your objective perspective, but it's the nature of the beast. And that's what the problem, it's a beast. It's not godly. And that's why when uh, the previous Rebbe was on a train ride in, uh, in Russia, and there was a whole debate amongst uh, different Jews that were on the, on the train about, you know, what is the optimal, uh, you know, political system, you know, is it Republican, Democrat, was not that, that was not the way, is, is it socialism, communism, uh, democracy, uh, uh, capitalism, you know, all the different uh, isms, and uh, they were debating, they came to the previous Rebbe and asked him, Rebbe, what's your opinion? He says, all of them have some truth, all of them have some truth. The only true, real truth is Torah, right? And that truth that they have, where does it come from? It comes from Torah. So, um, you know, when it comes to politics, 
So the actual vote needs to be what's good for the Jews, right? Because if it's good for the Jews, that means it's going to be good for the rest of humanity, by the way, just ipso facto. Um, and, but what's important and the point that you really, I think you mean, Ahuva, is that how can you um, make space for someone whose ideology is so contrary to maybe what your ideology or the other person's ideology and that you could be able to sit at the same table and um, maybe not even discuss ideology, but to, to be friends. That's an accomplishment that's not happening today too much. <laughs> I want to ask you about the first the first line you said that uh, yeah. that, that Yaakov sent Malachim angels. Where the heck did he get angels from? Where are the angels from? And he sent but, angels. Lily, after everything we just said about Yaakov, you have a question about him having <laughs> angels. Come on. <laughs> no, <I'm> just, <laughs> he could do what he could do with himself. Can you imagine what he could do outside of himself? <laughs> he could, he could. Uh, so. <laughs> Rashi says, Malachi Mamish, literally angels. So, uh, how, how does he get angels? How come Abraham had angels come to him? We're talking about people uh, that are not like me, not like you, We're talking about Sadiqim. And, uh, you know, how can they do that? By the way, you know, there's a debate of what that means, the word malachim, because the word malachim can right. be it messenger. Says messengers. It can it be says messenger. messenger. It can be messenger. But Rashi says, malachim mamish, literally. That's what Rashi says. So on the simple level of the text, Rashi's saying that it means literal. That's pretty uh, powerful. Very powerful. All right, those who don't have their camera on, please put on your camera so we could at least say goodbye to each other. We didn't say hello to each other, maybe, but at least we could say goodbye. Celia, put on your camera. Carolina, maybe we could see your baby. Oh, baby's asleep, probably. <laughs> Michael, what's going on, Michael? Oh, there's Esther. She's in the mountains. Look at those mountains over there. Beautiful. All right. So we're... Uh... Oh, hello, Susanna. Welcome, welcome. You also have... You're also in the clouds. Look at that. Everybody's have, uh, like everybody likes my background. So you're uh... <laughs> beautiful. All right, everybody. Uh, we're all trying to get all trying to get there, Rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Stay stay grounded, everybody. Stay grounded. Stay grounded. Be in thank the clouds, you. but stay grounded. Thank you. All right. Tomorrow morning we continue with some Tanya, and we got Rambam in the afternoon for those who uh, can't make it. Um, well, at least it's great to have you here tonight. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Rabbi. Rabbi. Well, bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Lato. Bye, Lato. Bye. 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 bye.